Well, I suppose I come from a family that's quite scientific. My father was um, and read physics at university. My grandfather was quite an exciting um, inventor. My Russian grandfather, he invented the volume on the radio, the one that you now use to twiddle. And he also invented a method of putting sound on film in 1899. <clears throat> My father and grandfather started a company in the 1930s that originally made bits for amateurs doing radio in the 1930s or t late 1920s, 1930s, people fiddled around with radios rather than they fiddle around with computers and the internet now. And then they started making hearing aids for people who were deaf. And then in 1956, they made the first pager, the bleeper for hospitals. And um, that's really, my father continued in that until the early 1990s. So I grew, <coughs> grew up where, in a situation where everybody expected me to be a scientist. And as a teenager, I had a lab in, my, in the basement of my parents' house where I did not very successful chemical experiments. And my brother and I had a menagerie of various animals. And most of my experiments were not, not terribly exciting. I made alcohol by fermentation and distillation. And then I had a rather unsuccessful experiment where I tried to distill formic acid out of oven cleaner without realising that the boiling point of formic acid and that of water is almost identical, so it's very difficult to separate. And then I also forgot to put the be glass beads into the distillation flask to get it boiling, and so I heated it to a very high temperature without it boiling, and then I dropped in the glass beads and the whole thing went whoosh and filled the basement with formic acid and I had to leave in rather a hurry. Another occasion I was working with potassium permanganate, which you know is very dark purple, and managed to um, stain my sister's clothes, which were by the sink waiting to be washed. And so, um, but it was quite fun doing the chemistry like that. So uh, for as long as I can remember, I've always expected to become a scientist. And from about the age of 14, I was determined to become a chemist. The other thing is at school in those days, you didn't do science till you were 13 or 14. So there was something quite exciting and surreptitious about reading and science and homework at school when you were meant to be doing other things. And I was doing simple physics experiments and the masters came round and asked me what I was doing and why I wasn't working. So there was an excitement of, of, of doing something forbidden, which nowadays I, well, I expect has completely disappeared in school because you have to do these things. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm a, one of the professors in the department. Um, I'm called a research professor, though this does not make an um, enormous amount of difference to my job. I mean, I, I teach, even though I'm called a research professor. I've been teaching for five hours this morning. Well, this morning, this afternoon, and which is why I'm not as excited as I might be sometimes. And um, in fact, I can't really understand why anybody should work at a university if they don't want to teach, because that's in some ways the most amusing part of the job. Um, the area that I'm working now in now is quite different from the one that I worked in when I was younger. And I work in an area that's called green chemistry. And green chemistry is <coughs> an area of chemistry which started about 15 years ago and is really devoted to finding cleaner ways of making chemicals and more sustainable ways of making chemicals so that we can go on producing the chemicals we need but without using as many resources or causing as much environmental impact as we are at the moment. Now it must be said straight away that the chemical industry is doing at the moment, by and large, not all of it, but most of it is doing as, as, as well as it can in terms of avoiding pollution, <clears throat> trying to make processes as clean as possible. But given the size of the population of the world and the number of people who at the moment don't have access to chemical products, pharmaceuticals and so on, 
we're really going to have to change things in order to be able to supply the needs of the um, as in less economically developed countries. And this is one of the reasons why I'm keen to interact with countries like Ethiopia. Well, I, I think science is very like journalism, what you do, which is that you, you all the time you want to be solving new problems and doing new things. And it almost becomes like a drug. You need the thrill of doing it. And so I, my ambition is to continue to solve these problems. I think that because of my involvement in the green chemistry, I'm very keen to try and introduce green chemistry much more widely. This year it's got into the A-level syllabus, so this is getting quite exciting. So this apparatus I'm quite proud of because I built this for my PhD, which started in 1969. So I bought this part in 1969. Which part did you build, sorry? Uh, well, I, I, the, the whole thing has been changed quite a bit. It's a bit like George Washington's axe. Various bits have been changed. But this was part of my original apparatus, and so it hasn't changed all that much since 1969. My ambition is to keep this, which was built at the start of my PhD, running until I retire. I think I'd like to make TV adverts. I think it would be great fun. I think it's an amusing art form of trying to get um, <coughs> tell a story very quickly and so on in an original way. And I like visual things and in my lectures and so on, I like striking pictures. Well, my younger brother is um, a film director and, and well, my mother w was um, trained as an actress. My grand English grandmother r wrote plays and um, so there's quite a tradition in my family of that. And But Stephen and I have not really collaborated very much, apart from his one film that involved um, a chemistry lab. Well, you, were, you were involved in that, were you? Yes, well I provided <coughs> some of the ideas and a little bit of the dialogue because where, where it was technical. But when you put your hand over it, it goes on and off, and as you move your hand up it goes brighter, so you can switch it on, off, and on again.